number four in the membrane physiology practice problems. So in this problem, we have a situation where a neuron is being placed in an abnormal solution. So we're told that normally in the extracellular fluid, there would be a potassium concentration of four milliequivalents per liter. And in this problem, we're putting in the neuron in an abnormal solution that has 10 milliequivalents per liter. And we want to determine what would happen to the resting membrane potential. So this is a problem that from the onset probably seems pretty simple, but when you really dive into it and think about how to solve the problem, you're going to have to involve a lot of what you've learned about concentration gradients, membrane potentials, and also action potentials as well. So in order to solve this problem, let's first talk about what would be happening in a normal neuron. So much like we've done in class, what I'm going to have us do is just draw up a neuron simply as a circle in this situation. And we're going to talk about some of the concentration gradients and the different pumps and channels that would be involved in a normal neuron. So we're told in the problem that for potassium, there is a concentration outside of the cell normally of four milliequivalents per liter of potassium. So we know that that's given to us in the stem. What we also know from the classes that we've done in membrane physiology, is that there's a sodium-potassium pump that's always running in neurons. And what this pump is going to do is it's going to pump three sodium ions out of the cell, and it's also going to pump two potassium ions into the cell. And this is an example of primary active transport. We're transporting these ions against their concentration gradients. So what that means is the sodium-potassium pump, which is always running, is going to establish a high concentration of potassium inside the cell relative to the outside. In fact, what we're going to learn in later lectures is that the concentration of potassium inside the cell is actually 120 milliequivalents per liter. Now, what we also see in a normal neuron are leak channels for potassium. And so if we have a leak channel here for potassium that's open, what we're going to see is that under normal situations, that potassium is going to go from its area of very high concentration inside the cell of 120 milliequivalents per liter to the lower concentration outside of the cell of four milliequivalents per liter. So what we have here is this positive cation, this positive potassium ion, that's going to be constantly leaving the cell. And we learned that that's one of the things that's going to contribute to what we call our resting membrane potential. So if we talk about our resting membrane potential, in cells that can vary from about negative 50 to negative 90 millivolts, but since we're talking about neurons in this case, we see in our notes that the resting membrane potential usually varies from about negative 70 to negative 80 millivolts. So what is that telling us? What that means is in a normal neuron, the inside of the cell is going to be negative relative to the outside. So this would be the normal situation for a neuron we would see certainly a lot of potassium ions inside the cell relative to the outside, and we would see this negative resting membrane potential of about negative 70 to negative 80. So if we look at this on a graph, what we would see is normally let's say the cell is sitting here at negative 70 millivolts. So we're looking at our membrane potential. So if this neuron is not stimulated, what we would see is a tracing where we would just be existing right here at a charge across the membrane of negative 70 millivolts. Now what we also learned in class though is if this membrane potential goes up to negative 55 millivolts, that is the threshold for a neuron. So what we would see is as we reach negative 55, we're going to fire an action potential.
So this is the normal situation where we would see the neuron sitting at about negative 70. And so this is just a tracing of the resting membrane potential here. So now that we've talked about the normal situation, what we need to do is look at what would be the case in our abnormal situation that was presented to us in this problem. So we'll draw up a line here, differentiating between normal, and over on the right-hand side, we're going to do the case where there was an increase in extracellular potassium, which is what they've indicated in this problem. So once again, we can draw up our neuron. And what we would see in this situation is, once again, we're still going to, at least initially for this neuron, have a potassium concentration inside the cell of 120 milliequivalents per liter. That's still the same. We still have our sodium potassium pumps that are constantly running as well. Now what has changed in this problem is, instead of there being four milliequivalents per liter of potassium on the outside of the cell, now what we see is there's actually 10 milliequivalents per liter of potassium. And remember that we have those leak channels, which are going to be very important for establishing our resting membrane potential. Now what we would see in this problem is, we would still see the potassium leaving the cell. And we would still most likely see this negative resting membrane potential. The difference here is what we've done is, we decreased the concentration gradient for potassium. So in other words, what we would be seeing is less potassium would be moving through these leak channels going from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So essentially what you're doing is you're holding more of these positive potassium cations inside the cell. So what that's going to do is actually make the inside of the cell become less negative So even at rest, because we've decreased our concentration gradient for potassium through the leak channels, we're going to see a less negative resting membrane potential. So if we look back over to our problem, that would indicate that response B is going to be our correct answer. Because we have more potassium ions in the cell, we're going to see that resting membrane potential would be raised. So if we go back down to our diagram of an action potential, and sitting, sitting at negative 70, we might be raised up slightly from that. Now, if we go through the other responses in the problem, just to see where we could potentially change this question in the future, what we would see is in the first thing, in the first response, it says become more negative. We know that's not going to be the case here because we just said the resting membrane potential will be less negative, meaning that we're going higher up on the membrane potential scale. We also can eliminate the answer that they would remain the same. Now for the next question, stem the hyperpolarized, what we would see there is hyperpolarized is a term that means to go below or more negative than the resting membrane potential. So if we were talking about our term hyperpolarized, what that would mean is we would see a resting membrane potential lower than what we started with. And that's not the case with what we saw here. So we know that that's not going to happen in this situation. Now for the last response, generate an action potential. We discussed this a little bit before, that if we were to see the membrane potential go up to threshold, which is our negative 55 millivolts, that would be the magic spot in which our fast voltage gated sodium channels would begin to open and we would see an action potential. So in order to generate an action potential, we would have to see a resting membrane potential reach negative 55 millivolts. 
Now, certainly we did see that the resting membrane potential was becoming less negative. However, it's very unlikely that given this change in concentration gradients, that we would be pushing our membrane potential all the way up to negative 55 millivolts. So given the situation of this problem, our best response that we could give at this time would be response B, and that we're becoming less negative. Now it's certainly possible if you kept on increasing that extracellular concentration gradient, then you could potentially start to push that membrane potential up to negative 55 to threshold, but given the small change that we've seen here, that's unlikely. So hopefully this helps with your understanding of question number four in membrane physiology. Please let me know if you have any further questions.